Uh, when you're ready. Well, hey everybody. Welcome to a special episode of, uh-oh, we gotta start coming up with a name for this. Uh, up in Smoke, Smoke Tank. Up in <laughs> Smoke, Smoke Tank. One of those is sure to land at some point. Uh, I'm joined by my brother, Dylan. We are set up outside to enjoy some fine smokables today. I myself will be enjoying an Oliva V. And Dylan, what will you be enjoying? Well, I am smoking out of a pipe from my favorite carver, Tiona Yacono from Italy. And I am smoking Cornell and Deal's Sunset Harbor Flake, easily my second favorite tobacco. Well, it's a good thing that we have enjoyable smokes because we're here to talk about something we rather did not enjoy. <laughs> ah, that is very true. <laughs> so we decided we wanted to get together, talk a little bit about the Fallout TV show because we've seen some rather glowing reviews for it online, and I find myself confused. As of this taping, it is ranked 175 on IMDb's top 200 television shows. That can't be right. I'm just saying what Jeez, I saw. Yeah. that's too high. Um, so yeah, so I was a little bit um, concerned with what I had been seeing, because <laughs> I thought, did I miss something? So mm -hmm. I, of course, enlist the aid of my brother. They're like, you gotta watch this, because I think I'm losing my mind. People are telling me it's good. And I don't think so. I had the uh, wherewithal and foresight to tell you, of course it's going to be bad because it's new. <laughs> yeah, that is, that's true. It wasn't bad for a lot of like the new reasons. Most things are bad, mm. you know? Uh, it's bad in like the old fashioned bad where it's just not very good. The writing isn't very good. The characters don't have too much to do. Mm. It's overly long. So parts of it feel repetitive. It requires big stretches of like credulity to even get to certain aspects of it. And, you know, uh, people respond to that with, well, that's like what the video game's like. And to be fair, the Fallout video game does kind of have this irreverent sense of humor. I'm simply going to harvest your organs. Huh? All this stuff that we don't like in modern TV now, like all the quips and right. everyone's kind of jaded, almost nihilistic, you know, we want to root for the anti-heroes, like the ghoul and things like that. It's like, yeah, that's stuff that Fallout's always had, but it's not fresh now because we've seen it so many times before, you know? So even though that is something that Fallout's known for right. and it would be weird if they didn't do it, the fact is we've seen it already, and the fact that Fallout was doing it in the early 90s with their video games, hats off to them, but it I, just doesn't translate well into a 2024 television show. Yeah, I would say that's fair. I would say um, my biggest complaint, and I said this in my spoiler-free review, uh, was that it all feels very Which surface. Which everyone should watch, link right here. They don't, it's fine, you don't have to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but that, oh, we should <laughs> say this is the spoiler review. Yes, we're gonna get into full-on spoilers, as yes. a matter of fact. So if you're watching this, we're gonna jump into spoilers at our whim. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the things I said is it felt very surface level Fallout. Like it mm. looks like Fallout's supposed to look. And I will give it a lot of credit for that. Now look, I am not a very big Fallout aficionado. I'm not oh, a big, either. I'm not a particularly big fan. I played Fallout 3, 4 in Vegas, all the new ones, you know, so all the nerds out there save me the hate about yeah, pretty not much playing when it came the originals. To consoles. Yeah, exactly. We never had a gaming PC. But it, to, so to that end, it looks a lot like Fallout 4 and New Vegas, like the Vault Tech gear looks really good. The Brotherhood of Steel stuff looks really good. It looks fine for what you it know, is. The yeah. weapons are believable in their do damage. We, and hey, speaking of that, of that do nature? we ever see any laser weapon get fired? They show mm. they show people with laser weapons, but I don't know if we ever see one shoot. You know, that's a good question. Maybe at the very, very end where the Brotherhood think, of Steel's raiding the compound. Yeah, I don't think we ever see, uh, what was her name? No one ever calls Moldova. attention to it. Yeah. Men Mendoza. <laughs> that's why I kept calling her Mendoza. And you know, it, it was, I found it interesting that our protagonist, what was her name, Lucy? Mm -hmm. That she was using that dart gun. Is that something that's from the Fallout games? Because they really made a big deal about it. And again, I only know yeah, Fallout 3 from one or two playthroughs. I don't recall there being dart guns, but maybe there were. I, I think for her, it was more of a, she can't bring herself to kill. And mm. so that's why it's so important at the end where she shoots her mom dead. So, you know, it's like, oh, look at that. She finally pulled the trigger on something. Oh. Yeah, it's oh, stupid. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's stupid because what's the point in showing us that she's an excellent marksman if she never uses the skill? That whole beginning thing where she's like, I'm good at this, this, and this. She used none of them. She does one scene where she beats up the big dudes in the uh, that mm. one in Vault 4. And like that's the only time she uses any of the skills that she's been, so she's know, trained in. And I guess if we're, because we're going to keep dumping on Fallout, I guess I will give them a lot of credit. When you're dealing with a game, like Fallout, or even another corollary to this would be like the new Dungeons and Dragons movie. You have all the people out there who say, oh, 
girl, they're worried about like the girl, yes, queen, super powered, being too leveled up kind of thing. Yeah. But here's the thing, in Fallout, you can make a female right. character in D Dungeons and Dragons. You can make a female barbarian that could be stronger than right. all the men. Because it's all fantasy and it's all based on those video games. And so this, by giving her all those powers, quote unquote powers, early and establishing like, well, yeah, because she lives in a literal hole in the ground and all she could do is train all day. It's like, that's a very easy buy-in. I'm like, okay, I'm here yeah. for it. And then I thought they actually did the interesting thing is like where it doesn't bail her out of a lot of problems. And no, I was like, no, no. She, like, oh, she, you she know, right. I was really expecting her to be a little more efficient, but like the brutality of the Fallout world really coming down on her. It's like, oh, okay, that's interesting for an episode. <laughs> I, I think that they miss an opportunity, and I also say this uh, in the spoiler one, free one, was I think they miss an opportunity to give her a secondary impetus behind, better go find my father, better journey into the wasteland, find my father. I recommend making her a medic like a doctor, mm. giving her medicine skills, because then she'll go out into the wasteland. It's a useful skill. It explains her compassion, her reticence towards violence, right? Because she's mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. I, I fix people, I don't break them, kind of mentality, you know? Not that it would be particularly- And it gives the, it gives the side quests a bit more meat, yeah, too. Yeah, because the side quests you know, are in she, service of the main she, quest. If she went out like, oh, well, now we need to go find supplies. I mean, now that's such a post-apocalyptic trope though. I mean, like even like we saw that in Jericho where they're yep. like, who's gonna go into the next town to try to find the supplies? And they all look at the main character and Skeet Ulrich is like, what? You know, and so, but he does it and that's the episode. Yes. It's like, there's some cliches you can play with that still work for the genre. There's nothing wrong with working within your genre and we just don't get a lot of that with Fallout, and now maybe the fans will say it's just because Fallout is so unique and like they have all this stuff to do, it's like, okay, but if you're only appealing to the gaming audience then, is there enough meat well, on and there, then, and I don't know. And then to keep focus on Lucy a little bit, her character is too wildly inconsistent even uh, with many regards. Um, she is supposed to be naive, she's supposed to be shocked by the brutality of the wasteland, but she has no problem taking off Michael Emmerich's head and just walking around with it. Like, no squeamishness. I would have mm. loved, again, playing into some darker comedy here, if she was imagining the head talking to her the whole time because it kind of broke her brain that she just decapitated someone. <laughs> and then you could have had more Michael uh, Emerson in there because I saw him and I was like, oh, sweet, it's a person of interest team up because Jonathan Nolan, Michael Emmerich, come on, man. And then he's, true. I love nothing happens. Of nothing happens with it. And it's like the dumbest end reveal where it turns out he injected cold fusion into his brain in a capsule. Yeah, that what was. What is that? that That's was, terrible. That's your MacGuffin? That was a little and weird. And you mean to tell yeah. me that the whole California wasteland area, all those buildings are all connected? You mm. mean to tell me those lights still work? You mean, like, how? Like, it's absolutely ridiculous. Like, it just doesn't make sense. It should have been a small encampment that had power. That makes sense. Bringing power back from, like, the Griffith Observatory through all of, like, California doesn't make any sense. There's no infrastructure. Well, you know what was funny, too, is, like, when they say like he escaped with the NASA, I thought it was the dog, and I was like, oh, like what's up with the dog, you know? And it's like nothing, and like no, they, and they, you up. can tell that the show just struggled so much. Like, what are we doing with this dog? Like, we can't just kill it, even though that would be very in keeping. The ghoul should have killed it when he did kill it. Yeah, exactly. That would have sucked. It would have been very jarring for us. Yeah. But it would have made. And then he stim packs the dog, and then we get a backstory about how he loves dogs. I'm like, uh, I know. Uh, you know what, let's go ahead and move on to the ghoul. Because actually, I would say Lucy's the strongest thing of the show, which I, is actually really good. I would respectfully disagree. Because it's the main character. Oh. I still, I go with Walton Goggins as the ghoul. Mm. I go with Walton Goggins as pre-ghoul. I disagree. Oh, I, I hate pre-ghoul. I like pre-ghoul. Let's get into, the, let's get into Walton Goggins. Tell me Goggins. why you dislike Walton Goggins, you monster. Oh, dear. Well, I did enjoy a scene with Matt Barry. But uh, <laughs> let, me, let me go on. So, why I didn't like the ghoul. First of all, He's just such like a cookie cutter, tough guy kind of thing. You know, it's just, it's so redolent of this archetype we've been seeing now of like the the older traveled, you know, like the wolf and cub kind of thing, right? And so- yeah, I thought you were gonna say that, especially well, with the way the season ends. Well, yeah, exactly. And the fact that everybody constantly runs into each other and keeps reteaming. Yeah, you know, and like, and, and you know, now you wanna talk about, 
you know, uh, Mary Sue's or Gary Stu. It's like, what, he just, like, he just can't miss? Like, he has his ghoulishness under complete control uh, all these times? And it's yeah. just, and it's like, you know, he's like, you know, when I've had this power, I'm other, you had a <laughs> welding accident here, and bam, yeah. bam, bam. Why and didn't he, he just kill like, Maximus kill? then? Yeah. He yeah, should have killed Maximus the first time they met. Uh, and, it, and he seemingly would have, except, you know, Maximus not only had power armor, he had plot armor. So Yeah, yeah, ridiculous you know, plot and armor. So you have to, like, you have these characters who don't act like themselves when they're interacting with the other main characters. It's a very, but you know, that's not Fallout's fault. You see that in other programs. It's bad, programs. it's just so bad I, What I really general. didn't like was the flashback. Even though Walton Goggins is smoking a pipe in one of the flashbacks, mm -hmm. I like that. Because I don't think it's needed. You know, I think one of the interesting things about Fallout when I was playing Fallout 3 was just kind of finding pre-fall things and kind of putting the story together yourself, realizing that the vaults were full of these weird experiments and things like that. Having the flashbacks, it's just like... All right. It, that it's part just, of the flashback I, I did not care for, where they're, they're, where they're straight up saying it literally spilling it out yeah. and stuff, and it's like, okay, come on. You know, and actually, I, I, one critique I saw someone said, like, oh, this is like uh, the Eisenhower optimism, you know, and... Here's the thing, though. Like Eisenhower's farewell address warned of the military-industrial complex. He wouldn't have been all in on Voltec. This is more of a Kennedy story. You know, when I think of future past, to me, it's kind of the political wish casting of right. what if Kennedy was never assassinated. Okay. And I think I think Fallout's future past aesthetic has way more to do with that than Eisenhower's like, like, f like, 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 like functional government, small C conservatism. You know, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't mind the uh, the the flashbacks. Okay, that's though. why I didn't like the flashbacks. Did that make sense? <laughs> I didn't mind the flashback stuff. You kind of, I mean, yeah, it would have been nice to keep Fallout completely in the wasteland, but I think if you're going for more of a general audience, people who are like not as familiar with the game, you got to give them something, a little bit of history, a little bit of context. I think the show goes too far. No, but I think far. you could get that through the tapes because Walton Goggins finds an old tape of him that he watches. They find the video of the vault where the grabber thing comes out. Use those tapes. Do it that way instead of just straight on flashbacks. Like, they could have easily have found... I think know, it still should have like, started it, with the bomb drop flashback. I thought that was cool at the birthday party. I mean, yeah, if that was, like, the extent Yeah, I thought that it, was fine. You know? But also... And, well, that's the other thing, too. The birthday party, I think, is a bit of a misleading scene because it kind of portrays Walton Goggins. He's, like, on the outs. Like, he was used to be famous, and now he's doing kids' birthday parties. Well, he might and still then, in season two. You never well, know. I, I mean, well, I don't know if there's enough time to do more yeah, flashbacks. I, I mean, they're well, pretty much obviously there. Well, because obviously they say at the end... He's got a, he and his daughter need to get somewhere where it's just his daughter and his wife and for some reason he can't go in. So we're mm. going to get some lame reason as to why he's not allowed in a vault, you know? Um, I, I, I think he would just refuse to but go. But it's like after you've like, where, where Eve's dropping on your wife, which I don't think him spying on his wife was a particularly strong move from the plot and I don't think he would be inspired to do it by the communist lady. Yeah, I don't think so I, either. That, that, that struck me as pretty weak. I mean, like yeah. he clearly had like some suspicions, you know, but like they just, like there just wasn't a lot to go off of, you know, yeah. it was just a couple people whispering in his ear. Yeah, you know, so. and like, yeah, I mean. Again, I, which took way too long, it's like we don't care. And now it's like, ooh, well how did she survive yeah, for 200 years? we got that sweet years? scene and where like, Walton I, Goggins does get to talk with Matt care. Berry. That's true, he gets to talk to Matt Berry. <laughs> yeah, and it's that great conversation about how selling your celebrity is like, <laughs> how people can't be upset at you. This is the next, you know, you're know, you always, celebrity's a commodity. Mm. Your, your point is to sell it, kind of thing. And then, you know, because everybody was mad at him for selling out to vault Tech, even though it was his wife's company. Well, she was not her company, but she worked there. I know, and it's, it's just it's just some of the some of the wink and the nod stuff that amount. they did like, for the flashbacks too is like, uh -huh, what if I try one of the thumbs up, you know? And it's like no one cares why Vault Boy has a thumb. Like we don't need the yeah. origin for that, you know? It's like watching Solo and they tell you like where his puffy dice come from or whatever. Or that his name is Solo. Or that his name Solo. It's yeah. like, did anyone care about that? Like, did, were there people out there? It's like, why is Vault Boy giving a thumbs Even up? And still, I like watching Walton Goggins do things, and I thought his acting is pretty good. Story notwithstanding. I, I well, he excited. looked good. I'm excited to see him on screen. I like the ghoul because yeah. the ghoul, I think, is more of like the typical kind of character that I would play, you know, like mm. charismatic gunslinger, also a cannibal, you know? So for me, I saw a lot of how I choose to play the game in the ghoul. Um, yeah, that's probably a fair way of looking yeah. at it, too. I imagine players were grafting their personalities onto yeah. some of these characters. Yeah, I was, I was excited to see them do cannibalism, you know? Like, uh, I was not excited with the show's overuse of sexuality. 
which I found none of it's none of it landed for me. Like like our first mm. uh, introduction to Lucy, she's talking about how she wants to get married to somebody from another vault and breed with them, right? Uh huh. Okay. Because she says, kissing your cousins is fine, but it doesn't make for sustained sexual compatibility. And I'm like, is this something we need to talk about here? Is yeah. this something that is important? Like, why can't you just say, oh, it's the yearly tradition where you marry someone from the outside? Because they can't do that because the other vault's been dead for two years. So it's like, so it's triennial, they said, which means once every three years. Mm -hmm. And they were sorry to Are hear- Are you sure that's not three times every year? <laughs> Dude, if it was three times every year, they should have known right away. Well, no, that's true. I know. It's oh, like the bi mon sci fi kind. You know, I don't, I, I just kind of want to go off on a brief tangent on that. The way the Raiders were attacking the vault, that was edited so terribly. It's like, yes. what is this Very time choppy. that is going? Because, like, she's running in and seeing it and then running back and getting weapons. And then this guy walked into the vault, but now he's back in time to hide. But the Raiders are still fighting people. It's like, what is going on? The show consistently has a problem with that in the editing department. Mm. The world feels very small, but I never know where they are at any point because they seem to, like, they use fast travel and they teleport yeah. back and forth and back. And they constantly are just happening it was to a run into each other. <laughs> Dude, and they constantly seem to just be running into each other, which strains, like, credibility. Like, it's just, you could set up certain traps that they have to go through, certain checkpoints, set up mm. towns, set up, oh, they stumbled across another vault. What's going on in there kind of thing? You don't need to force them to find each other in the wild. That's well, the least believable. You know, that's true, is that they keep bumping into each other. They're all going after this same MacGuffin. And it's kind of funny because, like, the show kind of forgets. Like, once that, like, uh, Squire gets his head on the, the uh, head, yeah, yeah, like, he dips like out for, like, episodes. two or three yeah. episodes. And and then, you're, like, you're literally watching and going, like, what is Susie doing again? Oh, yeah, she's trying to find her dad. Why is she looking for dad? All right, because she needs the head as a bargaining because she was What's originally going to bargain with the Brotherhood of Steel so they could bring power armor. Yeah, but then you know? she can't for reasons. Yeah, I know. You know, because uh, Maximus is like, oh, they probably won't bargain with you. They'll probably just take it. And it's like, okay, well then, <laughs> mm. the Brotherhood of Steel is going to attack that base anyways when he tells them to. So I, I yeah, I don't know. I, I was not that impressed with the Brotherhood of Steel stuff. I... I like the idea of like them being like the paladins and the squires, but that's better done in the game. Mm. I mean, Maximus does nothing really heroic at all throughout the show. Yeah, and he I think he kind of realizes that too, though. I mean, Maximus, I see that that's the problem with Maximus. Like, I just didn't care about his character, and like, and once he landed in the other vault and he was getting comfy and everything, I'm like, you know, this does kind of seem like a natural endpoint for him. Just let him stay comfy in the vault, because. Like, yeah. I don't know what else he could bring to the table that I would care about. And it turns out it was nothing. It was nothing. I, <laughs> I think he's by far the worst character in the show. I felt nothing for mm. him. No, yeah. I don't think I would go that far. I was not. He's the worst of our leads. The worst of the leads. Yeah. yeah. Worst character is Chris Parnell's Cyclops. <laughs> I know. If Chris <laughs> Parnell can't make that character work, it had no No one can. No, actually, I didn't really care for any of the other vault dwellers i didn't like the whole side story of her little brother trying to investigate the other vault so I'm like, i just don't like like make me care Ter like terrifying why do we care terrifying terrible reveal too that they're just keeping people in suspended animation mm. it is like the most predictable plot like device it's if you don't know anything about like science fiction writing i suppose it could come as a surprise to you but it's like this isn't the first time in Fallout, they've used, you know, cryostasis. It's not the first time in science fiction they've used See, and when that guy's brain is in the little car, I'm like, ah, this is Fallout. This is that like was the, funny. You know, like, this is kind of what I've been waiting for. You know, it's more of these crazy, like, yeah. future past inventions yeah, that you stumble on. style yeah. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then um, I really didn't like, oh, God, what's her name? Moldova. I want to, Mendoza. What? Oh, the bad guy lady who's not yeah. really the bad guy. Even though she just executed a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like she had her raiders go in and start murdering people, and then she's just misunderstood. That's, no, yeah, absolutely it's like, not. No, those, those vault dwellers, I mean, you can say what you will about vault dwellers, but they were innocent. I mean, Not for nothing. You maybe, probably could have talked to them, and somebody would have volunteered to help you. Yeah, I suspect they would have been receptive to hearing that Kyle McLaughlin was a traitor or something. I mean, yeah. you clearly had proof you had the, the mother's pit boy. It's yeah. like, well, how did this get outside the vault then? Yeah. You know, unless, like, like more people were in on it, but, like, why? I don't know. They, Him being able to activate nuclear bombs from his bunker makes it sound like that's one of the main bunkers. Why is he going to New Vegas? 
Oh, for sequel bait. Yeah, that's a Doesn't good Doesn't even make sense because he would have had to use that nuke from there or he would have had to contact the New Vegas wirelessly, maybe they'll say. I don't have a lot of faith in their writing as to ever explain how he activates the nuke. I think you're just supposed to take it that he can. Yeah, you know? everybody gets one nuke. Yeah. <laughs> <And he used laughs> it. I've lost the pin to my nuke. <laughs> Oh, there no, it is. I, I guess um, them that city getting blown up has caused some controversy with the nerds because that city's supposed to be around in the video games, but I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. I, I say nerd as a term of endearment. I mean, it, I'm pretty much a nerd too, but I'm you know the, the, doesn't matter the cause fallout it's, obsessives. It doesn't matter because it, it's kind of dumb in the show. And then why do they call her the Lady of Fire? Like, why are they drinking blood and sacrificing and wearing oh, ashes? Oh, you know what's so funny? When, when I was watching nowhere. When I was watching this and like they were leaving. You know, my girlfriend asked, like, oh, why do you think they'll leave? I'm like, because this is, like, a trashy new show. They're going to have, like, an orgy or something. And, of course, they're all getting naked. And I'm like, yeah, you know, like, thank yeah. you. Yeah, you yeah, but, like, why is she, like, the scion of fire or whatever? Why is there a cult for her? This bomb's only been gone off for, like, what? 15, 15 years? 15 years, maybe? Yeah, yeah it's like, what has she done? Yeah, and then, yeah, well, what has she done yeah. for them? Like, they don't, like, do they have a relationship? Like, do they, uh, inside, outside the <laughs> yeah. vault kind of thing? Yeah, like, like so all the people who are know. on the outside are, are like, survivors mm. of the, the Shady Sands or whatever. And why would they worship somebody who they have functionally abandoned? What I want to know is, why kidnap Kyle what McLaughlin? What they know what she's up to? I just thought of this. Why kidnap Kyle McLaughlin when Vault 31 is only defended by one little dude in a brain, and you could have kidnapped any one of those people from the cryo tube. Dylan, they just needed the, they needed an no. access code. Yeah, but yeah. any one of the managers would have, and presumably all of those managers froze she, in cryo Because she just wanted revenge on Kyle McLaughlin for killing, uh, I know, for but killing it, uh, Lucy's mom, who not, is implied to be her lover. I know, it's not practical, though. You know, it's like, if that was, like, look, if you want, because I, I think she could have just killed Kyle McLaughlin and then just go get one of the Popsicle people. Yeah. You know, you probably could stand a good chance of tricking them. Dude, you thaw two of them out and you execute one, and then you tell the other one, give me the code. Yeah, give me the code, I'll put you right back in, you know? Yeah. It's like, no, it's, yeah, it's, I didn't it's, even think of that until just now. It's like, it's yeah, terrible. they really, they did a lot of this show because the hard Dylan, way. Because Dylan, Kyle McLaughlin clearly needs to be the bad guy mm. for some reason. Just like Showgirls. <laughs> <laughs> you think he's the good guy, and then, no, no, no. Yeah, and then, he, <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be weird with. Nobody nuking you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yeah. But, yeah, it's just, the show's a mess. It's it's meandering. So much of it doesn't even pay off into anything. The ending is abysmal. Oh, I, yeah, the ending is just... It's absolutely abysmal. Yeah, like, I, I have no desire to watch season two. I'll like, watch season I just two, don't think there was enough meat it. on the bone. And I don't. I don't think the characters are well realized either, because yeah. like there, there's almost no accountability for anyone, any character. Yeah, like, and I just, I just don't care about the story. You know, it's like, okay, so follow me here. They capture Kyle McLaughlin. Then what? You know, like, the ghoul is like, oh, where's my family? You know, it's like, no, they're probably dead, bro. It's been two hundred years, and if they're not, I don't like. I don't know. It, I don't care. And after his you know, wife what's was Lucy saying, going to do? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like you already know he betrayed your mother. I mean, yeah. What, so now she's like, on a quest for revenge with the ghoul. Yeah, it's like you just want to kill Kyle McLaughlin now. Is that it? I mean, complete one eighty. Yeah. No mixed feelings yeah, and then about that's no, no mixed feelings about well, hunting okay, your father so the, down. And then the thing is too, it's like, oh well, I'll show you the people who are in charge of your daddy. You know, and it's like, uh, I, does she care? I mean, really? Do like, we really no. I mean, she could go back and take over the like. So, like, what's the end game? She like goes back to the vault with the truth, and everyone believes her, and she and they becomes all go to the surface, of the vault, and they, they all become all... middle management. Which is, I, I guess, mean, that vault succeeded because yeah. they were all meant to be middle management. Yeah, I know. It, it's just like I just don't care about oh, any of the possibilities. That's why everybody in Vault Thirty Two killed themselves, is they found out they were being controlled by popsicle people. What the hell was that? Oh yeah, we know what you are, and it's like, well, it turns out they're not. It should I mean, have been psychotropics. They're like they're not that bad. Yeah, yeah you know. This should yeah. have been psychotropics. They should have accidentally like done psychotropics on. Honestly, them or I think it was just bad writing because they do mention like, oh, we could do psychotropic drugs on other ones, but yeah. they already said like those three are Bud connected. wants to do a th three connected management thing, and I think it just got mixed up in the writing, and it was supposed to be assumed that the psychotropics killed them, and then they realized, that's oh, but that's I not thought. actually what we said. That was stupid. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, no, it's terrible. And then they. Dude, and then, oh, how quickly they clean up Vault 32. It's one day later. Everything's new, everything's painted, right? It's like mm. one, two days at most. And I was like, ooh, what's in Vault 31 that can clean up Vault 32 that fast? Mm. And meanwhile, it turns out it's just, oh, I just brought workers from 33, maybe, possibly. But like, the little the, the little guy doesn't know? The yeah, brother doesn't it, know? Yeah, I mean, well, here, here's 
part of the thing that I, I think is supposed to be part of the Fallout aesthetic is that like this stuff does start breaking down. The plans are not working. They are failing. The vaults are failing in slow motion over right. 200 years. So <clears throat> like I can buy that like the thir like the 31 vault starts losing a bit of control that the guy's brain's not working as well in that but like if you're going to do that side story see i guess i just would have eliminated a side story or something well i would have eliminated the flashbacks mm. that's what i would have done and i would have spent more time on 31 and again if you need to explain things from the past you can have tapes you yeah. know but it's very easy for the the problem is you're always going to need some kind of exposition dump because this world is just too weird and it's very hard to fit things in organically, in, especially inside the vault. It's very easy to give exposition to Lucy because she has no idea what's going on. So right. everyone has to explain See, that's, everything that's where, to that's her. That's where tapes would have been good for when that. He's like, you've got rad poisoning. You need yeah. rads. You yeah, know? The rad because away. she would have no idea what that what are you is. Talking so about? of course he would tell her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that kind of stuff works. As a matter of fact, if they had spent more time actually in Vault 33, if the whole first episode had been just Vault 33 and then end with the iconic leaving the vault, right? Mm. We probably could have got more like world building in terms of like, oh, we're going to celebrate Vault Day or something like that. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. one of those simple plot devices where, you know, she, like part of her job is to go teach a lesson on what makes their vault so great because she's the overseer's daughter. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the overseer's daughter in this classroom today and she's going to tell us all about the war that was, you know, mm. something if you're going to give me an exposition dump, at least bake it in. You know, <laughs> God, that would be so cheap, but actually it would be pretty interesting. Yeah. I mean, at least it gives you something, mm. as opposed to her doing her skill challenge, because they gave us a skill challenge exposition dump. I'd rather have her build the world for us. Because skill challenge, uh, yeah, I still, I don't know. Yeah, but then you have the problem, like if you show that many kids in the vault and then you have the barbarians come in and kill them. Shouldn't the have kids. been barbarians. That was yeah. a bad idea. Yeah, I know, the raiders were, that was weird. And like, Kyle McLaughlin didn't recognize her when he came in. she came in, or he wasn't there to greet he, her? Or? He said, I think I know who you are. When after everything mm. went down, I think. I don't know. I don't remember. I just know that the Raiders just, uh, they had, if they needed to secret away Kyle McLaughlin, they could have done it in the middle of the night and no one would have known. But instead they start murdering people. You know, and not even everyone. It's like, like uh, what if they like accidentally they... murdered Lucy? Mm. What if they accidentally murdered Kyle McLaughlin? Like, Not sure, the Raiders didn't know. Like, they, they, he like, doesn't wear anything that says Overseer. It's like, there's like, they just go nuts. Like, what if they had killed Lucy because they established that Mendoza has like a fondness for Lucy. Mm -hmm. The fondness for, what was it, Rose's kids, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you clearly don't care about her that much. You knew you were giving her to one of your bloodlust goons. Yeah, yeah, you just, well, yeah which you knew that. Could have ended yeah. really bad. <laughs> so And almost did, too. Not for nothing. Know, the guy it, did try to kill her. The show just falls apart, like, it, especially under scrutiny. Yeah, well, now, but why is it resonating so much? Why are people liking it so much? Why is it so popular? I think that's an interesting thing to look at. And one of the reasons, I think, is just because it kind of is like the triumphant return of mediocrity. You know, <laughs> like, if this show came out in the early 2000s, we would just say, like, eh, you know, it's like it's not as good as the other prestige stuff You're out right. there. But we have a structure for, quote-unquote, prestige television now that sets the bar low enough that everyone can get past it. I mean, like Disney Plus is churning stuff out. Netflix is churning stuff out. Yeah. They're all churning stuff out that meets these criteria that, you know, like that if a show like The Shield was blowing past or Breaking Bad or right. Justified, you know, those shows were like trying something. New. Even Mad Men was trying something new, even though it like kind of fell apart. So they, yeah. None of these shows are really trying anything new. They've kind of found... The formula, and frankly, we're only going to get maybe two, three seasons. You know, there's not going to be eight seasons. We're going to get two seasons. Out. They won't do it. Yeah, you know, and that's the other thing too. So it's you just kind of have to wonder. It's like, was did we really need this to be a series with all of this glut and all this filler when it could have just been a really cool movie? Yeah, I don't know. I I actually think because there's so much in it that is unnecessary. If you edit it down to just a simple, I got to get my father back story. The world, I think, would actually seem slightly more expansive because it'd be less backtracking mm. because like they're because they do seem to backtrack and teleport around and they only use like a, a few locations which across eight episodes doesn't make it feel like a very much of a wasteland like remember i was texting you and uh, casey and yeah. i was saying 
I was like, oh, they all end up in the same one patch of woods by the one cave. Oh, now they're all gone somewhere else. Oh, now they're all in somewhere else. Oh, now they're, oh, no, they're now. They get. The elasticity of them breaking apart and coming back together makes the world feel very small. And a lot of that doesn't progress anything. Like, uh, it doesn't progress yeah. characters. It doesn't really like, progress Like, they catch plot. up to the squire really fast. Like, Dude, they were well, held up. Well, I mean, he's up. got a busted foot. He well, should be, he should probably be dead. But they were still <laughs> held up in that, like, but they were, like, static and not moving. Yeah, they were trapped you know? in that. And, yeah, and he was ball. boogieing up to Fred Armisen's radio tower as fast as he could yeah no it's just uh as a movie you could have gotten away with less characters mm -hmm. could have focused on just lucy and the ghoul um maximus is essentially finn from star wars i don't think he's going to have much to do moving forward i don't think they know how to write him i don't think they mm -hmm. have anything interesting to say for his character which is unfortunate because there were times where i thought the actor looked like he could express some range and emotion. I yeah, mean, it's not his fault the character's no, bad. The actor his, well, is fine. Yeah, they kept writing him as weepy, too, which makes him kind of hard to root for in the Savage Wasteland. You know, it's like... Give yeah, me, it's I like, need bro, some, you're going to get eaten alive out yeah, here, man. I mean, come like, on. Like, yeah. Him, him being a little more knowledgeable and a little more, I don't know, like, shoot first, we'll rifle through their bodies next. Kind of like paralleling the ghoul, I think, would have been interesting because she sees nobility when Maximus does it, villainy when the ghoul does it. You could have had them have, like, similar philosophies that just go about it slightly differently. Yeah, I guess, right? Because, you know, I guess I would have, what I would have done with the Brotherhood of Steel in this, I kind of would have... I would have saved them for season two. I, I, if I wasn't going to save them for season two, I would have kept them as a bit more mysterious and I would have made them like really invulnerable like I would have even made like the ghoul afraid of the Brotherhood of Steel that showing up sweet. yeah and so like when they show up he's like we gotta get out of here you yeah. know and then like they just like wreck the wreck the place you know I don't know if that's what the Brotherhood of Steel does in the video games but like I would have them be like this huge perceived threat chasing them and then if it turns out they're good guys at the end so much the better but like just always have them show up and stomping and, and st you know but they kind of look a little like a paper tiger because yeah. you know the the one night he's like oh you messed up you killed me squire and it's just oh like, yeah if you heal me yeah, i'll kill you yeah. you'll be executed yeah, it's, like, it's like okay, okay. well then i won't and then, like you said they made um maximus so weepy and stuff it's like yeah like okay it's like it's like what what are we like are we supposed to be rooting for the brotherhood of steel are they good guys are they bad guys and ultimately you just don't end up caring no about any of them it's like i'm sorry i just don't care and maximus cheating death at the hands of the brotherhood multiple times mm. uh, terrible mm -hmm. like when they think he mutilated um fembot squire mm. or the uh the, the not don't get passing. us in trouble <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the not passing squire <laughs> okay <laughs> it'll just be, it'll be fair. I, I don't want to be mean but like not passing squire <laughs> um and then oh god i'm not even if i get in trouble for this this isn't even me because they uh they put their uh, their shoe all the way in their boot with a razor blade and mutilated it. And everyone's like, did Maximus do it? Did Maximus do it? Would have been more interesting if he did. Instead, the show goes with... My injury was my own doing, not his. A trans person self-harming. <laughs> so yeah. I, I'm not sure that's the greatest take, you know? But then the person who self-harmed also comes to Maximus's defense and says, don't execute him. I hurt myself. And it's like, well, they were going to execute him for not delivering the head and saying he was. Mm. Like, you know, I don't think they really care about your shitty foot. Yeah, like, you know, like, like, uh, this sorry. guy lied to us about succeeding in his mission. We have no, we have no need for him. And you just know he's going to ascend to like the right hand, you know, like. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's interesting is like the internal politics of the Brotherhood of Steel. But again, like, I just don't care. We didn't get enough time with the maester, father, all priest, whatever. Yeah, the bishop. You know, yeah, whatever, to, to, to get invested in his schemes. Because then he's just like, look, I, I'm planning something big and you're part of it now. And it's like, hey, guys, there's 10 minutes left of episode <laughs> seven. Why are you yeah. telling me this now? I'm <laughs> planning something. And the Brotherhood of Steel is part of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? No, it's, like, it's just we don't. Yeah, they, they focus on all the wrong things but i would have saved brotherhood of steel for a second season i would have focused more i would have just made them more mysterious and in yeah, the background exactly. i think that would have been no, like, cool. like you see one of their airships go by and they're like get down yeah but it's like now we know like the ghoul can kill them with one bullet each it's yeah, just they're, like they're, so they're, like yeah. what what is going to be the the threat or purpose from the brotherhood of steel like you're right too it's like what does maximus have to do for season two you know like he wants to get to the vault with lucy well lucy's clearly not heading back to the vault yeah. now so like you're just teaming up with her because now maybe maybe they're in love i don't know well they seem to imply it but i mean they don't know anyone else either so that yeah, could be interesting if lucy does have a better connection with someone who's like "Ooh, right yeah i've only known like three men yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah and my husband tried to kill me my husband <laughs> tried to kill me oh that would have been funny if she's like well i guess i'm not married anymore technically <laughs> but i too many missteps for me i like i said the whole thing is very surface level they never 
Doesn't feel like they gave the script a second pass to make sure that there was continuity. Yeah, especially you, know, you I, would want to make sure that like your inciting action in the first episode adds up with the finale, like the the concluding actions of the last episode. You want to make sure that your villains' motivations line up, and they don't. Mm. <laughs> you could have killed all those. Could have killed Lucy. Could have killed the brother. Could have killed Kyle McLaughlin, and you'd be in the same thing. Like, but like like we said, they don't even have to go in and do that. They just could have. Use the Pip-Boy to go steal a corpse of Popsicle or whatever. Yeah, I know. And like, that's what I was saying, you know? And then it's like, so then Kyle McLaughlin does use, I love that we've said his name like 17 different times. Yeah. And it's not who. Um, like, okay, so he does put the code in, so does he still feel for Lucy? Is there going to be a redemptive moment? Oh, yeah, and well, she'll like, forgive him just in time for him to die. Yeah, you know, and that's the other thing. Just like, Tack I, writing. Like, I just don't care. See, I, that's the thing is like, the the this show just did nothing to make me care about really any of the characters. Because it's all surface level. Yeah, it really is all. It's all, look at it, it's shiny. Yeah, exactly. Like, it looks good. I mean, it better look good. It costs like 150 million or something. Like, it, it was. That's a lot. It was a lot of money they That's put into this. You know, and then when you do. Spend 50 million to make a moderately priced movie, make a series of movies. You know, and then especially because, what, what is it, Jonathan Nolan? Yeah. And, you know, Jonathan Nolan, when he did Person of Interest. Mm hmm. You know, which obviously is a different style show. That's like 20 episodes a season, yep. hour long show. They focused so much on the characters and how they were evolving, changing, developing yep. their relationships with each other. I don't want to get into spoilers for Persons of Interest because I want everyone to watch it. You know, but there are some, some character moments that stick with those characters throughout the rest of the show. Yes. They're, like, they're, if you watch our Full Metal Alchemist review, like, there are character moments that stick with those characters the whole show. They are changed. Yeah. And you don't see that in these modern shows. They're, they're Teflon. Yeah. It's kind of funny. You have the worst of both worlds, right? In, like, Star Trek The Next Generation, they were Teflon because Reset it wasn't buttons. serialized. Right. Exactly. So, like, like, Data was always kind of struggling with his humanity, even though if he thought, like, I thought he already saw this problem doesn't really matter because they have to assume every episode is someone's first episode is going to be in syndication right so now we have the serialization with the reset button so they're still moving through l these story beats but they're not growing in any meaningful or interesting ways like when lucy came out of the organ harvesting plant and she had like the leather and so oh okay now she's like punished lucy ready to fight ready to do something ready to do something no still just kind of the same lucy it was just a costume change you know yeah. it's like oh well okay she had to kill a ghoul that you know she knew the name of that could mm -hmm. have been like one of her you're right that could have been her i won't make that mistake again but you're right there's elasticity there's rubber banding yeah she and, snaps and, right and back you hate, you hate to see it and it's that was because nobody's be... talking to each other when they write these things dylan exactly. somebody puts their name on a script and they submit it and they get stamped and then they're like we'll find a way to make and it and they churn, they just churn it all out, man, and it's and it's unfortunate because I don't think we'll see. And then if, people on the internet two, will carry water for it too. They don't yeah. even have to defend I, their own. I show. don't think we'll see anything in season two that will point back to season one. And go, oh, because of that in season one. No, you they're know? not even going to be in no. the same area. They're completely. I think it's going to basically be a whole new show. Yeah, and then they'll they'll still do some vault third. Well, no, because the brother's gone into cryo, or the implication is. I don't know if they showed. Ah, uh, he yet. won't. Yeah. No, nah, that's stupid. Well, one of the things, too, I thought was I checked to see if Walton Goggins' wife and daughter's name was on the cryo thing when I paused it, and it wasn't. So they're not in that vault. They're not in 31. So Lucy and the ghoul are um, going off. They'll, they're going to head towards New Vegas. And I, I don't know. If they find a way to make New Vegas interesting and more, oh, yeah. like, political, <laughs> nice catch. Oh, yeah. If they try to find, like, a way to bring in some politicking and, like, make it more like here are your factions now do odd jobs for them for bits of information or like mm. clues and things like that that could be interesting but i don't think they'll do it because i i don't think you would need a writer like um you would need like the team that did warrior right who can juggle all these different factions mm. in the same area with opposing and sometime aligning objectives right you would need someone who's really good at writing criminal syndicates and cops mm -hmm. and you know and you would need to do it in a gritty violent way and i don't think this is the team no, I don't think so either. I, don't, I think we'll be just as disappointed in season two as we are in season probably one. Probably more so. Yeah, maybe more so. I probably won't watch it. Unless we get to do another smoking review. These are fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for uh, this is a, you know, this is a test. Hopefully this came out not too bad. There's a lot of sun in my face, which I forgot about the Earth Star. <laughs> so that one's on me. <laughs> well, Dylan, any final thoughts? Look, 
I mean, we were pretty hard on it. Look, I, I don't hate it. It's just so average and meh to me, you know? It's like I'd give this maybe like four out of 10 or something. I mean, it's, it's a fail for me. Mm. I appreciate that maybe this is what the Fallout fans have been waiting for. I appreciate that they try to make it accessible for people just coming in. But as far as it, like, again, as of this recording, number yeah. 175. No, there's better shows I mean, out like, there. is that higher than Laverne and Shirley? I don't know. You know, is it high? And like, that's higher than a lot of shows that would have to almost definitionally be better, you know? So it, we see this happen with so much new media is like these big flash in the pans popularity swell up around it and then everyone gets disappointed you know it's like the mandalorian all over again you I, know? I i think that's a good point and i think that while there's initial excitement i think that if somebody were to sit down and watch this again with like a buddy of theirs because mm. that's the one thing i've been saying lately is like if a friend of mine asked me to watch it with them would i mm. emphatically no because I don't, even in our chat right now, it is not held up under scrutiny. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that um, people who like it today, if they go and watch it again, will necessarily like it a year from now. No, it won't last the test of time. Like this I, isn't going to be entered into the annals of great television. You know, like right. when our kids are looking back on like, what were the great shows of the 2020s? This isn't gonna be one of them. You know, just based off season one, I, I could be wrong for season two. Who knows? I doubt it. I you know, but like, no, this is this is it's this is just content. It's just ephemera, where no one's going to be talking about it in a while. And maybe someone can use this clip once it becomes the most popular show of all time and say how wrong I was. You know, yeah, but, does, I, I just, but, it, but if it does, it doesn't. That's, that's that's, that's I, I can't help but think that it, it's it's now going to be. If it if it continues to be this popular, I think it's going to be because people have made up their minds to find it popular and to find it likable. And I think it doesn't have anything to do with the quality of the show and everything to do with the people who are like, well, I liked it, therefore it must be good. You know? And mm -hmm. I think there's just, there's nothing wrong with liking something. There's definitely nothing wrong with liking something that's particularly bad. You know? I do it all the time. But I ha you have to admit, the show is flawed. It is mm -hmm. surface level. Not a whole lot of it matters. The ends are nowhere near the ending of the journey. The characters don't really go on a journey until the very end. They physically travel places, but they're like, there's no emotional growth. They try and shoehorn something in at the end, but it's just, again, it's surface level and it's reaction based. You know, the late, you know, critic, Roger Scruton, he was talking about how some artists develop art for a pseudo audience, but often they end up with an audience of suits. And I think that's kind of where we're at. <laughs> yeah. I'm just shocked that so many people like this when it is, it's... Uh, Average at best, you know, and... I think your four is pretty much on the nose. Yeah, that's really where I, I, I would Because it gets points for the aesthetics. And yeah, and again, you know? too, like, I, I hope we did establish there were some good things to this. It's not right. like- You and I may disagree on the role of Walton Goggins in The Ghoul, but- uh, I know, and we say this as people who are big fans of Walton Huge Walton fans Goggins, of Walton Goggins, of ever since The Shield. I mean, I did mention The Shield and Justified. Yeah, I know, his, his like, best Walton work. Goggins gets held up to a very high standard. I like to show The Unicorn. I like to CBS sitcom The Unicorn. I thought that was fine. Oh, you know, I never watched It that. was okay. You know, he's great in it as a single dad. But mm. like this, uh, I liked him as the ghoul. Cause like I said, the ghoul reminds me of a character I would play in Fallout. Mm -hmm. So maybe people are seeing some of the character stuff that they played, but I'm also starting to think because the video games now are spiking in popularity, not a lot of people played the game first. Mm. I think the game, the sh people are liking the show and now trying to see what the game's like. And I think they will find they're two completely different things. Yeah, well. Let us know what you think in the comments. Don't oh, I can't forget look to at the camera. I'm being blinded like, by your star. And don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the notification bell. That way, when we come out with new episodes of us smoking and talking about mediocre television, you'll be the first to know. Yeah, as long as the weather's nice. I mean, it's mm. a little breezy today, so hopefully none of, not too much got picked up on the microphone, but... Yeah, we'll find out. Actually, it wasn't that breezy while we were talking, yeah. I noticed. Like, my pipe st stayed uh, pretty lit. You'll notice I had to relight it a few times. Pipe smoking is a lot of relighting. Unfortunately, that's just part of it. Fair enough. And if you'd like to know more about my pipe adventures, listen to my episode of the Pipes Magazine radio show, episode 600, where I'm the featured guest. I'm sure I can find a link for it. Sweet. Anyways, <laughs> uh, we're going to probably have a second cigar and second pipe. And uh, uh, I like the sound we'll of that. We'll see you next time we do one of these tobacco casts. <laughs> All right. I like it. Is that what we're up going with? Smoke. Uh, up in smoke. Smoke tank. Smoke tank. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right. We're out of here. <laughs> That's it.